If you're already familiar with the basics of Blender's rigging features, you can probably skip this video. I'm just going to give a brief overview of the main features relevant to this DVD. The simplest rigging feature in Blender is called an empty. In other software, this is sometimes called a null object. An empty is an object that has nothing in it. No mesh, no curves, no materials, no nothing. All it is is just a location, rotation, and scale in space. That might not seem so useful, but we will see in the rest of this DVD that, in fact, they are quite useful. Closely related empties are armatures. Armatures also do not contain meshes or anything else that is renderable, but they do contain bones, which themselves are a lot like empties in many respects. Bones are essentially just transforms in space as well. Did I just say transforms? Yes, yes I did. In computer graphics, a transform is something like a, a rotation, location, or scale, or a combination thereof. This will become clearer in Chapter 3. Anyway, one of the strange things about armatures in Blender is that they're kind of like their own little world. In fact, armatures even have their own internal layer system, and an armature's bones can be put on different layers within it. It's kind of weird, but you'll get used to it. Armatures and empties are the primary means by which we will construct the framework and controls for rigs. Next up, we have drivers and constraints. Drivers allow us to set up relationships between arbitrary properties in Blender, and constraints allow us to set up relationships between objects' transforms. In my head, I tend to think of drivers and constraints as being related, because they both allow us to automate things in a rig. But I guess that's a little arbitrary, since ultimately, everything we do in rigging is a form of automation in a sense. Still, I like to think of these as the automation features in Blender's rigging toolbox. Surprisingly, empties, armatures, constraints, and drivers are pretty much all we're going to be using on this DVD. It doesn't sound like much, but you can put them together in really amazing ways to do really cool things. I mean, just think of all the things that can be made from protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? Simple building blocks, huge possibilities. Now for a few tips and tricks that I use a lot while I'm rigging. The first thing is hotkeys. Hotkeys are great, and will speed up your workflow a lot. I do my best to mention hotkeys the first time I use them on this DVD, but if I forget one, you can usually find them in the header menus. Besides which, hotkeys in Blender sometimes change between versions, so for all I know, you're watching this at a time when Blender has an entirely new default key map. So yes, be aware that you can find things in the menus if you need to. Also, you can call up the operator search menu at any time. At the moment, the hotkey for this is spacebar. If you press spacebar at any time, a little search menu will pop up, and you can search for any command by name. To execute the command, just select it from the search results. You can use the up and down arrows to choose it, or you can choose it with the mouse. With this feature, hopefully you will never get lost. If you're watching this DVD, you really should already know the next bit. But just in case, I want to point out that you can do mode switching via this menu here. Sometimes the hotkeys for mode switching can be confusing, especially with armatures, so you can always do it from here if you need to. Next, I almost never use the transform widgets. Instead, I use the G, R, and S hotkeys to grab, rotate, and scale things. The seeming downside to these hotkeys is the matter of restricting the motion to specific axes. But that turns out to be pretty easy. While you're in the middle of grabbing, rotating, or scaling something, you simply press X, Y, or Z on the keyboard to restrict it to that axis. By default, it restricts the motion using world space axes, but if you press one of the keys twice, it will restrict it in the space selected in this menu, which I usually have set to normal. If we want to clear out the transformations on something, we can use Alt-G, Alt-R, and Alt-S to clear the location, rotation, or scale of our selection, respectively. I do this a lot throughout the DVD when I want to move something back to its default position. Something else I do a lot on this DVD is move things with snapping turned on. To do that, simply hold down control while you move something. I mainly use this when I'm dealing with lots of overlapping things. I'll move some things off to the side with snapping on, and then later I move them back with snapping on as well. That way they go back to exactly the same place. There are different snapping modes though, which you need to be careful about. When I'm rigging, I always have it set to increments, 
Increment moves things in, well, increments. It doesn't snap to grid spaces, it moves things in grid-sized increments, which is an important difference, and it's what makes it useful for temporarily moving things out of the way. Lastly, there's this weird thing here. This is called the 3D cursor, and it's one of Blender's more unique features. It's basically just a position in space that Blender can use for various purposes. You can place it wherever you like by simply left-clicking. One thing Blender uses it for, for example, is as the point to create new objects at. If I add another monkey head now, it appears at the 3D cursor. Another use for the 3D cursor is as a temporary pivot point for rotation or scaling. Normally Blender rotates and scales around the average position of your selections, but you can change that. If you select 3D cursor from the pivot point menu, now they pivot and scale around the 3D cursor. The 3D cursor can also be used to help snap things to certain positions, but I'll get to that later in the DVD. Finally, I just want to note that this DVD has been a long time in the making, so the videos actually span several versions of Blender. There haven't been any major changes to the rigging tools covered on this DVD during that time, but just don't be too surprised if the organization of a panel changes during the DVD, or something like that. So with that in mind, let's start our first rig.